morning. Welcome back to the Patchwork Quilt. We are outside in my beautiful backyard today and we are fixing to make some pumpkin ornaments. So why are we outside? So here's the story behind that. I come home this morning because I work third shift so I came home and I had every intention of making these for you. And my plans got twisted a little bit. So my son is in the living room playing his PlayStation. Naturally, I put my foot down and I just came outside because you know, you have to pick your battles. You can't win them all. And now that you have the backstory about why I'm outside, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we need to do is tell you what you need to make these little pumpkins. The first thing you need are some little square blocks of wood. Now you can probably buy um, I don't know if you can buy blocks like this from Hobby Lobby. I don't think I've ever seen them, but they don't have to be this thick. You can buy some thinner pieces of wood. Um, I just happen to have wood that, with this thickness because I use an old drawer and my table saw just to save a little bit on making these. Um, so you need some wood. Then you need some paint. I have, this is chalk paint. Um, it is pumpkin chalk paint, and I also have some cream acrylic paint because I'm going to try and make some ghosts. I think ghosts would be really cute too. Then you need some antiquing glaze. Um, you can actually probably make this with some brown acrylic paint and some water, but I have a can of glaze, so I'm going to use this. Some jute cord if you want to make little hangers. You need some jute cord and a drill you're going to need a drill if you don't want to put a hanger on it then you don't need the drill you can skip that you need a paintbrush you need a sharpie marker a pair of scissors and i've got a paper towel to rub on my glaze that should about do it i think that covers what you need so let's make our first pumpkin Obviously, you're going to paint your wood block. Now, you can paint the whole thing, or you can do what I do. I just paint the front because I like the, the wood look on the back. So, let's go ahead and paint our pumpkin. This is probably one of the easiest crafts that anybody can do and they look so cute and again I saw these on an Etsy shop while I was just looking for fall decorations and they were probably a little bit bigger than mine are because I think they look cute small but um, theirs were four dollars and ninety five cents a piece so you paint the front of your block and then you need to let this dry. I'm gonna do a couple of them and then we'll go back. If I thought about it, I would have painted these in advance, but I didn't. So now you're watching me paint. I'm going to also paint some in the cream, so I'm going to clean off my brush in some water that I brought outside. I'll take a piece of my paper towel to dry it. Sorry, I keep looking that way. My neighbor's outside. Just talking to her cat. All right, with, since I have a dry brush, I'm gonna go ahead and switch colors to the cream so that we can make a little ghost. So 
since there's no opening on the cream, I'm going to squirt it out there and smush it around with my paintbrush. Get the same, same effect. Now we need to let it dry. I'll be back. All right, so it's been about five minutes and my pumpkins are dry. And I did forget to tell you this at the beginning, you are going to need some sandpaper. It's very important that you have to be sandpaper. This is a coarse grit, it's a 60. Um, if you have a palm sander, you can use that and you can use a finer grit. But I think for hand sanding, use a coarser grit. Before we sand down the sides, we are gonna draw our face on. So, I'm gonna make just some regular pumpkin faces, nothing, nothing ornate. Some triangle eyes, a triangle nose, and a smiley face. I guess you can try and make them uniform, but I don't really care about uniformity. And my marker's not working. Great time for my marker to fail. It might be the, the paint. The Sharpie markers might not work on the paint. I have to rethink my, rethink my strategy. Got her little face on there and I really want it to be darker but my sharpie marker is not working well on this chalk paint so I think I might for coloring I think I might go inside and get my big marker and I think that would will cover it better for coloring but for my outlines I want to use this fine point sharpie marker because I don't want everything to be so thick. King size Sharpie for coloring. Let's see if this works. Much better. See how much darker that is. Let's make a mad one. My cream is not dry yet, so while I'm waiting on that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and distress the edges of my two pumpkins with my 60 grit sandpaper. So you see it's getting a little, the orange is getting a little bit lighter on the edge and then it goes into the wood. I want a little bit more extra wood on the edges. We have that. You can see the wood coming through and then it gets, the paint is lighter and then it goes back to the original paint. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. Now I'm going to wipe all the dust off because sanding does leave a little bit of dust. And then I'm going to take my antique glaze. And dab a little bit onto my paper towel, so just a little bit, and I'm going to go around the edges. I 
and then I'm going to put a little bit more on and I'm going to go over the whole thing. It's kind of giving it an old, dirty, antique look. And then I'm going to take a clean paper towel and wipe off the excess. And there you have it. It's very cute, very rustic looking. I want this one a little grungier. Now what you can also do is use this to stain the sides. And it just really makes it look a little bit more finished. And you should probably wear gloves. I don't ever wear gloves. All right. Now that I've done all that, I'm going to drill some holes. I'm going to use a smaller one. I like the bigger one the way it is. I'm going to drill holes in the top of each corner. And I have a 1 8 inch drill bit in my drill. After you get your holes in the sides of your wood, you want to cut a piece of jute cord. It doesn't have to be a specific length, just cut your piece. Then you want to get you a, this is kind of like a, not a sewing needle, this is a needle that they use in knitting crafts. And the jute cord will fit in the end because the eye of it is really big. You want to go through the back of your wood and pull your jute cord through. After you get that through, you want to knot this end because if you don't, you're going to lose it. It's going to come back out. I know. I've done this. I like to double knot mine. And then cut off the tail. And then you want to do the same thing on the other side.
now you have a cute little pumpkin ornament that you can hang on a tree or on a tree or on a ring or you can just hang this anywhere wherever you feel like hanging it you can hang this then you also have one that you can put into um, like a flower arrangement you just stuff it in there it's really cute they're both really cute now that I've got my pumpkins done I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my ghosts up our ghost and pumpkin ornament video thank y'all for hanging out with me in my backyard today and making these and i hope to see you next time bye